Um, I'm Ali Heron and this is my persuasive speech. Looking at these two athletes, more, most of you can probably recognize LeBron James. The biography website tells us that LeBron James was no surprise a star in high school. He won championships, multiple awards, and then when there was nothing left for him to do, he entered the draft and began his uh, career in the NBA. Marcus Latimore, on the other hand, is less known than, than LeBron James. Um, looking at his website at University of South Carolina's profile, he had just as many accolades as LeBron James and won just as many championships and was also voted the nation's 19th best player and the second best running back in the ESPN. But if they're so similar, why is LeBron James so much more uh, known, well known than Marcus Latimore? Marcus Latimore had to continue his career at University of South Carolina instead of continuing instead of entering the draft and becoming a professional player such as LeBron James. Um, all football players looking to be drafted must wait three years after graduating high school be before being drafted and often risk the high chances of getting injured during those years that could dramatically jeopardize their career. Together, if more athletes would band together and come try to appeal this rule, they would be able to become more popular and well-known such as LeBron James. There is nothing scarier than having so many obstacles between you and your dream. The current rules for football players have an obstacle that they have to wait three years sitting around in the classroom until they can begin their career and their profession in the NFL. Although many of these athletes may not be ready, there are many exceptions such as Marcus Latimer. There are many, uh, there are many such as Marcus Latimer who are able to continue on and begin their profession. The NFL is the only professional program that does not allow players to, to enter the draft straight out, of the NFL, straight out of high school. The NBA attempted to do something similar to the NFL, but realized that that did not work and they put their players at high risk of getting injured. An NCAA website tells us that in 2013, once deciding that they are going to play college basketball, they have the opportunity to enter the draft once as an underclassman. Once they enter the draft, their name can be entered. They can even be drafted, but they have the opportunity to choose whether they want to enter the draft or continue their career in college basketball. They have to make their intentions clear before the spring signing uh, is what they're going to do. Um, but unlike NFL, at least they're given the choice. Another very important aspect that you get thrown back and forth a lot is should student athletes get paid? If you were a D1 athlete being able that have the opportunity to go into the NFL and get paid between $7.7 .7 million and $23.4 million, according to the NFL website in 2015, but are sitting around in a classroom getting paid $0 every year, which one would you choose? For me, it would be a no-brainer. And many people argue that, yes, the money will still be there once you, sell, once you go through your three years, but that is true unless you get injured. And that is exactly what happened to our friend Marcus Latmir. In his court gauge wrote in an article in November 2014 on Latmir in the, on the Business Insider website, giving us full <coughs> insight of what happened to Marcus Latmir. Prior to his injury, he was a first round, possibly around the 21st or so pick. His, he would have signed a contract for a four year, $8.3 million uh, football scholarship to the NFL. Then, in his junior year season, one simple play happened and he tore every ligament in his right knee. A picture says a thousand words. As an athlete, it is the most ter terrifying thing to, to have a knee injury. Being told that you're not unable to play the sport that you love for, for so long can be very terrifying, but for someone like Latimore, it is something much more important on the line, his career. After, after months of recovery, he was able to get drafted in the fourth round. He made he made a 2.5 million. He signed a 2.5 million dollar contract, but just because of one injury, his whole life changed and his future was changed forever. So why is this rule in place? Mike Flora in the NBC Sports in October of 2015 gives us an inside look of why the NFL believes these rules are so important. The first rule is that they believe that the physical, mental, and emotional abuse that they put on these players in the NFL are far too great for anyone of a younger age. And to that, I ask you to look at six foot eight, 287 pounds, Sean Oakman. If you were to tell me that this man cannot be in the NFL, 
The second reason, and more prevalent reason, is the NFL's free farm system. For this, the players that play in the NCAA, they play for three years earning the NCAA money, keeping, the, keeping college football a huge revenue for the NCAA. It gives the NFL three years to watch their prior, their prior perspectives and without having to pay them. Both the NFL and the NCAA get uh, monetary bonuses just for having this three-year rule. But who's suffering? That would be the athletes. Another person, another athlete that we can look towards is Leonard Fournette. According to Emmett Nolaton in the Business Insider, Fournette was an LSU running back and a true sophomore who averaged 210.3 yards a game this past season. Now the debate is whether he should he sit his junior year or should he continue playing for LSU. Many people, um, such as Mike Florio again and other big uh, sports broadcasters, believe that he should sit this year. If he were to sit, he would be able to not risk the, the fault of injury, as well as um, as well as be guaranteed to be able to play in the NFL next year or the following year. He. But many uh, fans and peers would consider him selfish if he was to sit this year, and so he must make this decision. Um, if he and other people would gather together, and they would be able to, they would be able to come against the NFL, much like Maurice Claret did. Unfortunately, Claret was the only person who has ever attempted to do this. An article on ESPN website in 2003, we learned all about Maurice Claret prior to the lawsuit against the NFL. He was a number one uh, running back in the whole country as well as uh, uh, Big Ten Player of the Year his freshman year. He won many championships as well as the national championship his sophomore year and when he he wanted to begin his career in the NFL. According to the Sports Digest in 2004 he won the lower he won the case in the lower systems and he was off to the NFL but when it reached the federal court they ended up knocking him right back down. Claret is just one person. There were other players standing beside him, fighting for their right they all deserve. Possibly this case would have ended a little clearer. Um, those that are unable to enter the draft prior to their still junior year are still good enough to be able to keep college football at the level it is. But those that are exceptions, such as these three players, would be able to continue their career and begin in their NFL. Together is how we were going to be able to overcome this obstacle. Together, if more athletes got together and came, came against the NFL, they would be able to win this argument. And Henry Ford was been quoted saying, coming together is beginning, keeping together is progress, and working together is success. And together we'll be able to overcome this obstacle. Thank you.